So uh, that's, that's my contribution on uh, endocrine disease. We have an old friend, well, I shouldn't say, a friend of long standing. I've been told that's the term I should use. Uh, Nancy Brown from the VA, we've worked together now a lot of years, um, is a physical therapist and a nurse. So I thought she was an ideal one to address um, treatment, some of the end results that, that we know come from endocrine disease. And uh, she's going to address it from physical therapy and a nursing viewpoint. I wasn't really sure where to begin my presentation. So what I decided to do is just give, um, go over it like the endocrine system works with the nervous system and to regulate metabolism, water and salt, blood pressure, response to stress and uh, sexual reproduction. And that with aging, the primary alterations in the endocrine glands is not a result from aging itself, but it's um, an alteration that comes through secondary changes to neural metabolism and the decreased um, target organ responsiveness. That more than changes in the gland themselves. Okay. That through aging, the pituitary, adrenal, cortex, endocrine axis is not really involved that much with the aging process. The glands that you see most changes occurring or mo the results from aging occurring in are the thyroid, parathyroid, and the pancreatic gland. Now, when you're talking about endocrine pathophysiology, and that's what I'm going to just really do is a review of the, the common disorders of the endocrine glands. The definition, the cause, uh, some common signs and symptoms that you would see in the clinic, um, some possible treatments. Go through that as an overview and then at the end discuss some common things that you see with aging, things that you would do in the clinic in the, in the treatment of these type of conditions. So the first thing is endocrine patho uh, pathophysiology. There Disorders of the endocrine system can be broken down into primary and secondary dysfunction. Primary dysfunction is that's associated with excessive or insufficient hormonal production by the gland itself. And it can be caused by a tumor or by another abnormal stimulus such as um, taking of antibiotics which would mimic a hormone. The Secondary dysfunction is something that's causing an abnormal stimulation to produce a, either an excessive amount or an insufficient amount of hormone from the target gland in the endocrine system. And that can be caused by like chemotherapy, a surgical removal of a gland. Um, sometimes it's a therapy for a non-endocrine disorder or an excessive therapy for an endocrine disorder. So that you have the two, um, the primary and the secondary dysfunctions pathophysiologically discussing um, the endocrine system. Now, have I confused you? <laughs> the, I'm just gonna go through the different glands now. You have the pituitary gland. And the number one disorder that most people associate with the pituitary gland is diabetes insipidus. And what this is, is it's a deficiency of the anti-diuretic um, hormone, ADH. And what this does is that the um, kidney doesn't reabsorb the water, and the body loses water through, the ur uh, through urine. And the cause can be um, result from an injury, such as um, head trauma, 
uh, pituitary trauma of some nature, infections such as meningitis and encephalitis, uh, pituitary neoplasm, or a vascular lesion like CV, uh, CVA. Common signs and symptoms that you see with someone who has diabetes insipidus is polyuria, polydipsia, and dehydration, thirst, um, urination, and uh, just, this, just drying out of all the systems. The treatment is to replace ADH. And it's important to know that if, if this is not treated, you go into severe dehydration, into shock, and into, into death. And um, working with anyone who has diabetes insipidus, you must, const anybody who's working with somebody who has diabetes insipidus, you constantly have to re-stress that you take your medication and you take it on time. And I've had, in the past five years, I've had um, three people in my clinic who have had diabetes insipidus. The two were elderly, over the age of 65, and it was due to stroke. And the third was a young man who was, it was due to a motor vehicle accident. And trying to get them to understand that this is going to be forever now, and you must take your medication, was very, very difficult. We had constantly, anyone who was working with them kept reminding them over and over again. It just couldn't grasp why, if they didn't take their medicine, they were feeling fine. If they didn't take it, what, what was it going to do to them? Some of the side effects when they do take the replacement, um, because the ADH stimulates uh, smooth muscle contraction, if it's involving the um, vascular system, you can have increased blood pressure. If uh, it's it affects the GI, you can have increased diarrhea, which is again loss of more of fluids. It affecting the coronary artery, um, you can go into angina and even MI. So when you're working with someone who has diabetes insipidus, you want to look, monitor their vital signs, watch your parameters. One thing that you will find is a, a lot of times they'll be very irritable with you. you know, they, it's because they're not sleeping at night. So they're having to get up and go to the bathroom a lot. So you, know, they, you have to just give them a little, little more um, TLC and let them know that, that you understand that why, they're, why they're feeling that way with you. And again, emphasize taking the medications. The um, other side of the pituitary gland, where now, this was because you didn't have enough ADH, is a syn uh, syndrome of inappropriate secretion of ADH, and that is that you have too much. And this causes a marked retention of water in excess of what's uh, the normal um, sodium levels in the body. This is known as water intox uh, intoxication. Causes uh, usually pituitary damage because of uh, infection, trauma, neoplasm. Um, some malignant tumors secrete a substance that is like ADH. Uh, and usually that's a pulmonary tumor in nature. Also, some thoracic pressure changes that um, occur because of TB or being on a ventilator and not being monitored correctly. Common signs and symptoms are headache, decreased urine output, weight gain without any visible edema, seizures, muscle cramp, vomiting, and diarrhea. The treatment is absolute restriction of water if the serum sodium level is below 125 milliequivalents per liter, then you might have various other restrictions of different types of fluids beyond that. And then putting them on diuretics. Now, if someone's on diuretics, for whatever reason they're on diuretics, um, in the clinic, you, I always sort of check to see, you know, how, your, how is your potassium doing? You want to make sure that they're not depleting their, their potassium. You ch check for muscle weakness, fatigue, cardiac arrhythmias, abdominal distension, nausea and vomiting. And you might want to discuss if, if, you're, if they're showing up often in the clinic and they're complaining consistently of these things, discuss with the doctors. Um, we do. We have them uh, draw blood, check potassium, um, 
and just keep a, a close association with the doctors as to what's going on with them. A third disorder that you can find with the pituitary gland is acromegalia. And this is um, an um, abnormal enlargement of the extremities of the skeleton resulting from increase, increased growth hormone. This occurs in the adult in cases where there is a tumor of the pituitary gland. Now you do see this in children a lot and that's cause of uh, gyatinism, I think is how you pronounce that. But in the, uh, in the adult, what you see is usually in the later years, this occurs because of a pituitary tumor. And what you see is that, um, their hands, feet, face, jaw especially, becomes larger. And the common signs and symptoms of this is um, bony enlargement of what I just said, face, jaw, hands, and feet, Di diabetes mellitus, profuse sweating, hypertension. Carpal tunnel syndrome is seen quite a lot in a lot of endocrine disorders because of um, the compression within, within the wrist itself due to changes that are occurring in connective tissue. Um, hand pain and stiffness and back pain. The treatment for this would be pituitary tumors can be eradicated. Uh, pharmacolog pharmacological management of the growth hormone, decreasing it and decreasing the tumor size or doing surgical removal of the pituitary gland itself, followed by um, cortisone replacement. Most of the time, uh, those of us in uh, rehabilitation, PT, OT, kinesiotherapy, we see these people for pain management, for uh, pain relief, uh, application of moist heat um, to the area that they're having the greatest pain. Okay, the adrenal glands, you have adrenal insufficiency. With, this is known as um, Addison's disease, and it is a result of a decreased production of cortisol and aldosterone. The cause could be an autoimmune process, tuberculosis, removal of the adrenal glands themselves, radiation to the adrenals, malignant adrenal neoplasms, uh, and destruction of the adrenal glands by some chemical agent. What you see with uh, signs and symptoms of this would be dark pigmentation of the skin, hypotension, progressive fatigue, hyperkalemia. Uh, the GI tract involvement would be anorexia, nausea, vomiting, have generalized joint pain, tendon calcification, and hypoglycemia. The treatment is usually just to replace ACTH, which is the hormone involved, uh, dietary measures to replace lost sodium and fluid, and to monitor and decrease potassium intake. And the opposite to this is Cushing's syndrome or Cushing's disease. Now, this is one um, disorder that we do see a lot in the clinic because it, the Cushing um, syndrome is caused in many instances because someone's on steroids. And um, it can be because there's a hyperfunction of the adrenal gland, but most of the time that when we see it, it's because um, someone has been placed on steroids for a long period of time. And what you typically see is the moon face, um, you know, the nice round puffy face, um, buffalo hump at the back of the neck. They might have a very protuberant abdomen you see a lot of muscle wasting and weakness to the point that it almost looks like they have muscular dystrophy. Um, decreased bone density, especially in the spine. We see a lot of the um, elderly people that are maybe who are, on, who are COPDers who have been placed on uh, a steroid and they come in with uh, compression fractures of the spine all the time. Um, kyphosis and back pain. They have easy bruising. Uh, they come in with like the um, tissue paper skin is what I call it. You know, you just you look at, at their skin and you get rips and tears. Um, 
They have a lot of emotional disturbances. They're very labile. They can develop diabetes mellitus, and they have very slow wound healing. Treatment is an eventual taper, uh, eventually tapering them off of the steroids in the case of where it is because they were put on steroids. And um, I have to stress, this must be done very gradually because it, what happens is that the body gets used to having the steroids given to it. So the adrenal gland doesn't produce as much as would normally would, would do. Then if you stop the steroids, the body isn't geared up to produce what you need. And so you go into an acute adrenal insufficiency, which can, um, if not treated, could lead to death. So when you're working with patients that are on steroids, um, many times, I mean, they're, I've caught patients saying, well, I didn't really feel so good today, so I decided I'd take an extra one. You know, um, you know, they play around with them in trying to get them to understand that you know, when you're on steroid therapy, you need to maintain what the doctor has you on and don't try to play with it. Um, and don't hold back. Don't say just because you feel good today, you're not going to take what, what you're on. You know, talk to the doctor and start having it decreased because of this fact that you can really go <laughs> do yourself a major injury. Um, as I said earlier, there's a lot of marked muscle wasting, um, almost to the point of muscular dystrophy, and it's very evident in the uh, quadriceps muscles. These people have a terrible time getting up from a sitting position to a standing position and then being able to hold a standing position. So this is something that um, you, we work with in the clinic trying to strengthen the muscles, but we have to take it within their tolerance. They fatigue out very, very quickly. And we do very simple uh, quad, um, quad sets, quadricep sets, which is just a tightening and relaxing of the quad muscle, um, some short arc quads, and just very gentle exercises. Um, and uh, precautions for fractures are, is, is something that you have to keep in mind when working with, with patients with Cushing's. Because of the demineralization of the bone, especially the spine, it does not take much. I mean, sitting down, I, I, I personally did not have this happen to me, but a, a colleague of mine, someone was just sitting down onto the treatment mat, and they went down a little, you know, they just sort of dropped and um, started complaining of back pain and had them x-rayed and it was just a, a compression fracture because the, the bones were that fragile. So keep that in mind. Um, thyroid gland, oh, by the way, as I go along, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to jump right in. Um, thyroid gland, two, at least 2% of the older population are affected with some sort of thyroid problem. Um, one problem that we don't see as much in the United States as you used to, and that is a goiter, which is just the enlargement of the thyroid gland itself. And this was due to um, decreased amount of iodine in the diet. Well, they've corrected that. That's why you see in, uh, when you go to the store, you get iodized salt. And so we don't see this very often. If you do see in the older population, it's, it, they have just a remnants of a problem that was caught earlier on. And they might have a little bit of swelling in the, in the neck area. It doesn't, talk, doesn't cause them any pain or anything like that, but it's, it's there. Nancy, if I could make a comment here. My husband and I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, and under the city of Detroit are the largest salt mines in this country. And growing up as children in the late 20s and early 30s, we were subjected to what the IRB today would have a fit about. We, since we lived in the Great Lakes area, we ate a lot of fish, no sodium. Most, almost everyone had an Aunt Gladys with the goiter. Mm -hmm. But um, we were uh, the subjects of a study, and all of us that lived in around the area of Detroit were given iodized salt without mm -hmm. knowing it. And all of a sudden, the, the goiter went. Uh, <laughs> the goiter, number of goiters that 